In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Men, it is good that we are here. Amen? Amen. It's amazing to look out and see all of you here because the Lord God's called you here. It's because of Jesus Christ's work in your life that you're here right now. And it's because of the work he wants to do in each one of you that he's going to send you forth. As we begin this celebration and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries which are about to happen right here, right now, let's call to mind all the ways in which we need conversion, the ways that we've sinned and fallen short, and ask the Lord in his mercy to help us and make us worthy to approach these sacred mysteries. I confess to oh, Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my, my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, 
Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. the Lord my soul who heals the broken A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, there is no reason to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That what I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, 
so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I become weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother, mother in law, lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then, the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went, off to a, and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him and on finding him said, everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. My name is Father Augustine Lieb, T-O-R. I'm a Franciscan from St. Andrews, just south of TCU. Some of you might know me, most of you probably don't. If you've ever heard me preach before, you know it is my custom to preach on this. God is love, and you're made in the image and likeness of it. That's the basic gist of what you need to know to know what you need to do. Today in these scriptures, you hear a lot about suffering. You hear a lot about the trials and difficulties of following the Lord, being close to Him, and then what happens as he sends you forth? And the heart of God the Father, who is love, is most perfectly manifested in the crucifix. And as he tries to remind you of who you are, men of God, 
He reminds you that you are most perfectly in his image and likeness when your love is crucified as well. Job teaches us that in the first reading. His perseverance, his diligence, his struggle to continue being faithful to what a God he couldn't understand through the suffering manifests the reality of God's favor and blessing. And we see in the conclusion of the book of Job a tremendous revelation that not only benefits Job, but benefits us today here in this room. St. Paul, who suffered for the gospel unto blood. The man was stoned to death. He was scourged, imprisoned. He suffered. And he never counted the cost. That's what he tells us about here today. He doesn't count the cost. Whenever you love a person, if you truly love them, you don't calculate whether or not they're worth it. Unless something's very wrong and very broken. But just in the reality of falling in love with someone, you just long for them. And our lives in the Lord look like this, and God himself looks like this with regard to us. Guys, he looks at us, and he's willing to do anything to have us and to use us. I taught a Bible study at St. Andrews, and that particular day, the focus of the Bible study was sacrificial love which fits very nicely with these readings. And after it, two of the more macho men in this Bible study, they were young men, young adults, they said, let's take you out to eat, Father. I said, great. Great, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I said, and we went out to Buffalo Wild Wings. And we sat, you know, if you've ever been to Buffalo Wild Wings, we sat at one of the round tables, and I was right next to a booth. I had my back to it. It was probably about this much space, right? And it's a Thursday night, and it's like 9.30 p.m., so it's not really bumping. And we sit down, and these guys are like kind of excited about the idea of sacrificial love. And if I only knew what the Lord was going to teach me through me teaching. These, how many were there? Four, three young men came in. I would put them in their early 20s. They came and sat in that booth right behind me. I was in my habit, in my sandals, eating with these guys. These young men were under the influence of at least more than one chemical. They were exceptionally, no, seriously, they were exceptionally vulgar. They were rude to the waitress. They made obscene gestures to her and, and made gestures when her back was turned that were even more obscene. Uh, and they're right there next to me. And I could see the two men that I was at the table with who were young men. One was an Iraqi war vet, and the other one is sort of, he, he's just also kind of, and I saw both of them, they're like, you know, you could see like the heroics growing within them, right? And I said, guys, I said, the weapon the Lord has given us in this situation is only one thing, and it's love. And they said, well, what does that look like? And I said, all right, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it looks like this. And I turned, and I said, what's up, guys? And they looked at me. Now, they saw me the whole time because I was like a sore thumb in that place. But now I'm talking to them. I said, what's up, guys? And I know that God made them. My war and your war is not against flesh and blood. Those are my brothers that are captive to the enemy. They're not my enemy. And I'm looking at boys that are in prison camps to my enemy. And I talked to them through the bars. And I said, what's up, guys? He said, man, they're like, Get out of here, man. I'm like, no. I was like, I just noticed you guys. And I'm looking. I'm like, Lord, what's true and good and beautiful about these men? It's like, you know what? They're looking to have fun. That's good. They, they want to enjoy fellowship with each other. That's good. It's broken. It's twisted. But that's the beautiful thing God made. And so I'm looking at that. And I said, I can see you guys. Like, you guys are good friends. And you enjoy being with each other. And they're like, yeah, man, whatever. They're like, man, you smoke weed? <laughs> they're trying to push me. They're trying to push me. They're trying to get me to hate them. At least they're en my enemy's trying to get me to hate them. And he's putting things in their ears and their minds to get me to hate them. And I am in the image and likeness of my creator. And I will not hate them. I will die for them. 
And I'll die for them right there in that restaurant. And brothers, that's what I had to do. I had to die for them. And I said, I was like, no, no, guys, I, I don't smoke weed. They're like, oh, man, we do. I'm like, oh, OK. I was like, well, you, you like having fun, you know? I was like, God, that's beautiful. And they're like, he's like, I got medis he's like, I got health problems. It's medicinal. You know, and his guy, they all start laughing. I go, oh, you have health problems? He goes, yeah. There's my end. <laughs> I said, I know, I know the answer to health problems. I got a cure for that. It's like, what? I go, Jesus. I dropped the J-bomb. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, man, and like you could see you getting out of here. And he's like, man, I, went, I just got out of prison, man. He like turned up the heat. It's like, I got out of prison. He's like, someone gets in my face, man. Like he's talking nonsense. He's trying to scare me and threaten me. One of the three guys now is starting to put his head down and get ashamed. The Lord's working on him. He's feeling ashamed because all I'm doing is loving them. Because that's all I got, guys. That's all you have. If I would have stood up and started fighting these guys, not physically, but arguing with them, reprimanding them, asking for them to be removed, I would have went home miserable, hostile, angry. They would have been hostile. It could have escalated. Even if it didn't, it would have been no good. And no one would have won. I wouldn't have won, they wouldn't have won, and my Lord and Savior, sure as heck, would have been put on the outside of the whole situation. But he was in there, and he was using me. And I just kept talking to him, and it got to the point where they were like, man, turn around, get out of here. Nice sandals, man, nice sandals, <laughs> you know? Turn around. I'm like, all right, guys, I'm like, man, I'm like, can I say a prayer for you, man? He's like, what? I'm like, can I say a prayer for you? Just like that little announcement, it's beautiful. It's amazing how effective it is. Can I say a prayer for you? What do you mean? I'm like, can I? I'm like, here, give me your hand. He's like, man, don't touch me. He's like, get out. He like flipped out. I'm like, don't worry, don't worry. I'm like, Lord, I just ask you to bless them. I'm like, you've made them good. You've given them good hearts. I pray you bless their hearts, free them from whatever it is. Blah, 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 amen. And I turned back around. They cooled out a little bit. They still kept doing what they were doing. Then, do you think God's love is limited? No. Then when the waitress came over, I said, hey, did these guys order their food already? She said, yeah. I said, don't tell them, but bring me their bill, please. She brought me their bill. I paid for it. I said, please don't tell them until we're gone. We finished up. Meanwhile, the two guys from my Bible study are there like. <laughs> They're like, oh, man. So we left out of there. We walked out just ahead of those guys. Just, just ahead of them, we're in the parking lot. I'm like, how you guys feel? They're like, okay. I go, do you feel angry? They're like, no. I go, are you like all fired up? They're like, no. I was like, love protects you. All of the work of the enemy that he wanted to bring you into the camp he had them in through them, he wanted to minister hate and anger and destruction to you through them, but, they, but he couldn't because it will never defeat love. And because we loved them and we didn't hate them, we were impervious to the fiery darts of the enemy. The shield of our faith and our God who is love protected us. And they were like, yeah. <laughs> it's real. And as men, it's real hard for us sometimes to not want to make ourselves God and fix the situation. Instead of genuflecting, becoming love and letting him into this situation. When your wife is nagging you about the same thing again, try being crucified instead of correcting her. Whenever your neighbor is pushing the same button again, try being crucified and loving him instead of fixing it your way. Don't be imprisoned to your enemy. It makes you think your brother is your enemy. I'll tell you what happened. About 15 seconds after I walked outside and asked the boys how they were doing and they said good, those three guys sprinted. The doors went and they took off and jumped in their car and peeled out of that parking lot. They were skipping their bill. They were skipping their bill. They have no idea what happened. But the love of Jesus Christ protected that waitress from getting stiffed. The love of Jesus Christ protected that institution from being robbed. 
The love of Jesus Christ protected our hearts from being violated. The love of Jesus Christ bears witness to itself right now to you so that you can know it's in you too, so that you don't go out there and try to do it your way. He always wins. Love never fails. There's songs about it. There's a scripture that says it. More importantly, it's just true, guys. And you're in the image and likeness of it. So as you go forth from here, be it. Amen? Amen. Oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> guys, this is what we're about. This is who we are. I am love in Jesus Christ. And through his sacraments, he makes me him. It's no longer I who live. It's him who lives in me. And that's the same for you. And that's what changes the world. Not white knuckle Christianity, but crucified Christianity. The Lord didn't crush the Colosseum. He filled it with the blood of his martyrs. The Lord didn't trample the Roman armies. He won them for himself. And now our Vatican is there. He wins by being crucified and relentless. And he wins. Don't let your enemy convince you it's done any other way. It's gentle and furious. So brothers, congratulations. Congratulations on responding to the will of God who brought you here. Congratulations for receiving that relentless love a little bit more deeply into your heart. And I praise the Lord who gets all the thanks for what he has done in you. And now, the God who you've been receiving into your mind and your heart and your spirit is now about to touch your very flesh physically and fill your physical body so that your spirit may overflow. This is good. Okay, I just realized I don't have all day, and neither do you. <laughs> but praise God. Brothers, let's come to the altar of the Lord and receive everything he has for us so that we can no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died for us. Amen? Amen. Let us now stand and proclaim the faith that we believe in. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God for God, life from light, true God for true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. My brothers, as we come together to the altar of the Lord, we now bring all of our prayers, hopes, and supplications, trusting in our God who is love and provides for us in every way. That the church may be strengthened by the Spirit in its ministry of spreading the good news of Jesus throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those consecrated to God by the vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience, that they may seek to live their baptismal promises more intensely and have the grace to persevere in their commitment to the Lord and serve with open hearts and willing spirits. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Christian lawmakers will actively promote justice through the legal means entrusted to them. We pray to the Lord. That the sick throughout the world may have the strength and wisdom to unite their sufferings to those of Christ and obtain his peace and healing, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of our parish community who have died may be welcomed into God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the men who attended today's Sword of the Spirit conference will be filled with the Holy Spirit and live out their faith by proclaiming the gospel of Jesus to their family, friends, co-workers, and strangers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, you are God alone and we trust you. We ask you to hear and answer our prayers as we make them in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers in Christ, our presentation hymn is Healing Waters. my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord set the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all of his holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings. 
and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so, in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night. And gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we to confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you, time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father Most Holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin, to the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father as the first fruits for those who believe, so that, find, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with, blessed jo with Ma the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the mercy, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. peace, be with peace.
I use this as one? Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our first communion hymn is You Are Mine.
Christ. Our second communion hymn is We Remember. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear brothers, are there any instituted acolytes amongst you? If you could see me after Mass. My dear brothers, if there are any extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion commissioned in the Diocese of Fort Worth amongst you that is able to stay and help us consume some of the reserved Blessed Sacrament that is, quite, that is a bit more than expected after Mass, we probably only need about 10 men with the help of the instituted acolyte. If you could please gather over here at the end of liturgy, it would be much appreciated. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.